I also wanted to get some, I don't know what you can share and you don't have to share anything you're not comfortable with, but I'm kind of curious and I'm sure other people are as well behind some of your experience working for Tor and Mozilla. And um, I guess what you developed there, um, how you feel those browsers are, are doing after you've left. Um, I know that there's a lot of people who aren't happy with a lot of decisions Firefox makes. So it'd be cool to get um, any perspectives you have on the browser space in general. Yeah, so just, I guess, briefly, um... I was at Tor for about four and a half years, uh, and uh, Tor, the Tor project is a really small group of people, um, and the, within that, the number of people working on the Tor browser was was really small. Uh, so I worked on all kinds of stuff, mostly privacy protections, but also UI and all kinds of random things. I spent quite a bit of time working on partitioning, uh, so that's kind of when I learned what partitioning is and how it works. Um, and it was kind of Tor Browser that helped to pioneer partitioning. Also, Safari was doing partitioning um, early on as well. That you know, that was one of the things that motivated me to to do the tests. So yeah, and and in the meantime at Tor, because Tor Browser is based on Firefox, uh, I was learning the ropes of uh, the Firefox code base. Um, I started to work with a team at Mozilla um, to try to move a lot of the patches we had, the, the code changes that turned Firefox into Tor, to move those code changes into Firefox with disabled by default so that Firefox would now be carrying these cool new privacy features that you could turn on. It also helped Tor Browser because then we didn't have to keep reapplying these code changes every time something in Firefox changed. So it could just be maintained by the Mozilla. So that got me kind of uh, working a lot with the Mozilla folks. And then at some point I said, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could turn on these things in Firefox? So I, I was lucky enough to get a, a job at Mozilla as a product manager. Uh, and the idea that I had was let's try and push forward some of these privacy protections, we'll polish them, and then maybe we can ship them as features that are either easy to turn on or, or better yet on by default. So yeah, so one of the things I worked on was total cookie protection with a really amazing group of engineers, fantastic people who, you know, they worked for years on this to get this partitioning working. But, it, you know, it was challenging to get the thing finally rolled out. Um, you know, there's, at every company, there's different people with different opinions, you know, and so there's, especially in the position like product manager, which is something I hadn't done before, I got involved in lots of debates around like, what should we ship by default? What should we work on right now? This kind of thing for privacy. Um, so, you know, it, it was definitely very challenging in that respect. Uh, but I'm really happy that, that in the end, Firefox did turn it on by default for everybody, both in desktop and mobile. Also at uh, Firefox, uh, I, I worked with another team that um, we, we put this feature together called HTTPS only mode which basically it's a checkbox when you turn it on um, it warns you before you uh, connect to any insecure site and it tries to make any insecure connection that normally would have been insecure it upgrades it to a secure connection if possible and then otherwise it, it warns you so uh, this uh, seems to have really taken off it's quite popular uh, among firefox users uh, other browsers are have introduced the same thing usually off by default but there are a couple browsers that have it on tor browser has it on by default now and that's actually really important for browsers using tor because uh, if you make an insecure connection to the tor network you are vulnerable to uh, an exit node in the tor network spying on you or even interfering with your traffic and stealing data from you um, so you really need to use HTTPS only mode in, in a Tor network using browser. So Tor browser has it on by default. Brave Tor mode now has it on by default as well. Yeah, and then since then working at Brave, uh, you know, I've been working on more HTTPS related things, some fingerprinting things. And uh, I mean, in general, at all three places, I've been just amazed by the, the talent uh, that people have. And I'm just learning every day from other people like how to do everything and how 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 to do this job. So it's uh, it's actually been an amazing experience. Well, thanks for the inside look. Uh, I'm sure that I know that's not something I've heard before. Um, I don't normally get to hear much about the development that goes on behind a lot of these privacy tools and within browsers especially. So hopefully that's good insight for other people listening as well.